Hey YouTube, my name is Kenny. Thank you for checking out the channel. So in today's video, what we're working on is our custom 99 Yamaha Banshee back there. So yeah, things do look a little bit different. I did take the beard down a good bit. Shop's kind of empty. My boy picked up his Raptor 250 today. So what we're going to do is jump into the details that I have on this, on this 1999 Yamaha Banshee, the one we're doing custom, and see what we got back here in store for us in this video. Probably going to be one a little bit more short, not going to be as in detail, but we're going to hopefully get the full build done in this video. And then we're going to be i don't know it's going to be two videos actually because we're going to be waiting on the harness so i know i won't be able to get it started but we'll get a whole bunch of other things done in this video all right so it looks a little bit of a mess right now but that's cool we have our motor just placed in here so what we have is a stock rebuilt yamaha banshee motor so the cases have been surcoated with the glacier silver same as the carbs. The carbs are a 28 Keyans. We have the stock covers. We have 24 millimeter pistons, uh, 64 millimeter pistons, stock head cylinders, and everything in that. Well, the head is stock, but it is shaved to bump up with the compression. We have, this is just dust on there for right now. We have the biohazard. I really like those with the red in there because we're going to be doing some red on the machine as well. Coming around the machine, we have the same thing for the other side. I do have a new sprocket and a chain guide that we're going to be using. I don't go crazy and put a DRW in there. I put just something in there for now just to have it on, just to not. I hate selling machines without. But overall, this is what we got going here for right now. We got our stator. That we're going to be putting in there. I think it's over here on the floor. Pro taper bars that we're going to put on OEM front bumper. We have OEM stock shocks that I took apart. I coated the bodies. I put new bump stops on and I powder coated the springs with the candy gold. So it looks really, like I said, it doesn't look good now because it's in here freaking dusty. But it will look good soon enough. Hopefully in the next day or two, I'll be able to have it down on the ground. We have our front arms that have been powder coated red along with the swing arm and everything. And these parts are a illusion red. So they're really deep in the red. Let's see if I can get better with the flash. Yeah, so here's our red. Looking wonderful. Same with our carrier back there. And our arms. So we got all that illusion on there looking wonderful as can be. And then that's going to be the rear end of it. So we're going to have the red on the back come out and swing arm and all that. So just a few more parts just to get it rolling. I think I have everything pretty much to be able to do the front. I have the steering stem that I'm going to put down through there in a bit. I got a new bearing that's going to go in. I do have both of my steering knuckles and spindles complete that I just need to get those installed. Here's a bunch of parts that I've pre-did black. Not flat black. It's kind of like a semi-gloss. But we have our dust shields and our foot pegs, spindles. There's a whole bunch of different parts that we're going to be using on the build just to get it moving along quickly. I kind of pre-do these parts so it doesn't take me forever. But let's go ahead and set up the camera and get some more building going. Yeah, so here's our red. Looking wonderful. Same with our carrier back there hey good morning youtube my name is kenny thank you for checking out the channel so in today's video what we're going to be working on is the 99 custom yamaha banshee that i've been talking about in all the other videos so if you follow this kind of content and you follow my videos this is the one some people have been waiting on so we're going to go ahead and jump into what we're looking at what i've already gotten done and the plans of how this thing is going to be looking in a bit sorry i didn't get it all the powder coating and all that stuff done but this is some pictures of it so this is what it looked like when i first purchased it it was from 
Brian E. Off. I got it out at West Coast ATV Parts, or I'll, I'll put it out here. But Brian E. Off is who I ended up getting this off of. Had a great deal on it. Came with a title and everything, so I got the title and all that stuff transferred real over to me. Over the time, I did have a couple of them stacked away that I was going to be building, and I've been working on those, so I have about two more left. Soon to be having three more. Yeah, so something else is going to be coming. Maybe four more. So I do have something completely different. Oh, five more, a bunch of different things. But anyways, what we're going to be doing is um, I did get this thing stripped down, blasted, powder coated. It is a candy gold. We're going to be doing some illusion powder coating on the arms, getting it more custom, sticking with the stock but slightly modded motor stuff. And then we're going to get this one down, get it on some custom bead locks, get some nice wheels on it, and get this thing out. All right, everyone. Hopefully the junk behind doesn't make this look too crazy. So I didn't do really any work today, but this is what I got. All this stuff is powder coated or Cerakoted and ready to go on. I got the front spindles that I have to do. One of them I have to switch the, uh, well, the hub, I gotta switch the spindle. We have our arms on. So the front's pretty much done. We have our motor in there. These were the cylinders, like I said, that came from Josh, ported. 64 millimeter bore. It was freaking hard to let go of this one because they got so. This is this is a, a this is not even been bored. This is 64, not 64.25 or 64.5 to 64. This one's got tons of life left. But I got a OEM shaved head, so it's gonna have the better compression or more compression. I need to test it to make sure I can run it to have the right fuel. Those are the carbs that I got. We know from Josh. Cerakoted cases. And then down here, Illusion Cherry rear end. The axle is actually an anodized gold. And then I did the kind of zinc color gold that I've been trying to do. And then that's just where we're at for right now. Got plenty to go. I mean, I know for sure that today, if I wanted to, if I was off, I'd have the steering stem in. The steering completely done. Rear end on. The only thing that's holding my rear end up is... My rear shock, which I will substitute that for this piece of steel for the time being, or that piece of aluminum. And I have to rebuild my wishbone and the linkage. i just waiting on the bearing kit and rebuilding the mill. So it won't be much until I can get this thing on the ground. My wheels are over here, waiting to be powder coated. So yeah, we're moving along. So here's we are. So here we are with everything where it's supposed to be. So for the most part, we're just going to go around what we have. This is the bolt kit. There's random bolts and nuts that are in there that we're going to use. Stators, stem, foot pegs, a lot of black parts that I did prior. We also have these spindles and the whole knuckle area done. But on this side, this one does have a little bit of a bend to it. So I was able to see that. Once you look straight down the middle, see how that top bolt has space, but the bottom bolt is touching? So that's tweaked down, and that would give you some kind of, you know, instead of the wheel being like this, it'll be cocked in a little bit. So we have another spindle that we're going to change that out with. Get that all up here and get it all ready to roll. We got our shifter, all of our mounting plates, everything in there that we're going to be using. Now, front bumper is looking great. With no issues there. Here, what did I do? We have, like I said, the candy gold frame. The illusion red, which looks great. See, this bolt does not belong here. This is just a random bolt. Over here, this is the zinc plated one that I had redid. And these ones down here are all stainless. So what we're going to do is redo this one. This is just a placeholder to keep that bolt in there. So that bolt's gonna get done. It's actually sitting over here, right there. But we are gonna get it done here in a little bit. We have our tie rod sitting here. I do have new tie rod ends that we're gonna get installed on it as well. We have our linkage rebuild kit for it. Our reservoir cup. So we're moving in the right direction. Motor's basically just placed there. I still have to put the stator in. So this is just here, just so I can get some looks going on. 
I do have a case saver that's going to be coming in the mail. It's just going to be a simple one, nothing crazy. Motor's looking great. As I say, that nothing's in there as far as it going. There's just one random bolt going through holding it. But I'm going to, we're going to put all the brackets on there, get the motor secure. Swing arm is really rebuilt already, and everything is looking great. New sprockets are coming and all that, but overall, everything is in here. New bearings, powder coated. I do have to tap those threads. I did put the bump stop back in there. Bearings, everything in the rear have been removed, packed, reinstalled. Everything's good. There is anti seize on everything, but we're getting close, really close. So let's go ahead and take care of a couple things that we know we're going to have to be doing. First, what we're going to be doing is getting that whole clutch side assembly back on. Over here, I did just go ahead and put the water pump in. So the water pump is back in and I put grease on my gasket so it's ready to go. But we're going to go ahead and get it reinstalled. Everything's over here is looking great. Pancake bearing installed and we have the Cascade clutch basket. So we're going to prop the camera up and get rolling. So we're waiting, we're getting a couple of the parts done right now. I have the Cool Coat 3, uh, the DPW system, we got the pulse on, we have the golden ticket in there. We're gonna pull it closer. We're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of coating on these. The coating comes out kind of brown, as you can see. I'm shooting at about 100 kV. My bag is a little light over there, so I'm going to be switching my bag out here in a second. But we're going to go ahead and get all these coated, come back, put them in the oven, let them really, really cure out, and then we're going to take them out, get some clear on them, and then hopefully we have a nice candy gold. All right, so we got our wheels powdered. So we have the golden ticket on. Come on, let me closer. And as you see, it's nice and kind of like a, it's kind of got like a camo green color to it. Looks really good. We have our oven set over here at about... 400 degrees. So we're gonna pick these up, put these in the oven right now. We're gonna get those in there really good. Let's see, the oven's nice and open. We're gonna get those in real quick. All right, we're gonna let those be in there for about 15 minutes for right now. Not the whole time. I am gonna check them to see if they get up to 10. I think with the candy gold, it says do a partial cure at 400 degrees. But from the people who I've looked at online who I've had luck with and what I did with my other one, I'm gonna do a full cure just like any other kind of like super chrome. So once it gets to the 400 degrees, I wanna let it cool or let it cook out for maybe 25 minutes or 20 minutes. Once it gets a full cook and it's completely done, I'm gonna let it sit, then we're gonna let it cool down, then I'm gonna hit it with the clear coat, put it back in, slowly ramp up our temperature. So you hear that sweet sound, that sweet sound is the sound that we've been in there for 15 minutes at 400 degrees, but that doesn't really matter if the part hasn't gotten up to 400 degrees yet, you can't even consider that being cured. So we're gonna go ahead and just check our parts Look, it's crazy. So look how crazy that looks. They're not that going green anymore. So we have our first change. We've went to the silver. We are at about, not even close to 400 degrees yet. Uh, see, you notice that it is a little hotter on the ones at the bottom because, of course, they're right there by the elements. We're going to go ahead and close this back up. Give it another 15 minutes to see if it gets up to temperature. Now, the thing is, is like, as you see, this whole process of getting this candy up the color, 
it can be about an hour. I mean, to get it up to where it's at. Then we gotta let it cool down, and then the other process of getting it cleared can be about another hour. So we're gonna just go ahead and let it do its thing, and we'll come back once we're getting closer to getting those taken out. All right, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and start just securing the motor in. The motor's just placed in here right now, but we're gonna do is just get a couple things out of the way. The carbs are just in here for looks, just so I can get a couple pictures, so we can just sit the carbs up here, get those out of the way. But right here, you see this bolt, it's gonna come out and it's just gonna get replaced with one that I already have some anti-seize on. So let me wiggle it around a little bit, see if I can get it out. That bolts out. New one's in with the anti-seize on it. Gonna put the piece of hardware on there. Now I already do have that little piece of dampener down there. It just takes up some of the vibration, but that's there. And there's also one on the other side of the front of the motor. So we have that in place. We're gonna go ahead now and just put these two, here's one, here's two. These are the front motor mounts. They're gonna go on there like so. One's gonna be on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and get it started. It's gonna be down here. anti c is already on the bolt. Starting to run it through. When things are placed there and just able to sit, see if I can get a nut, one of these bolts in there. One. Two. So those two go on. All right, so as I said, that's the other piece right here that's in there. But I'm just gonna push the bolt through just so there's enough that I can see it. Then I know that I can get it all set on there. All right, so we're gonna just take the lower support. It's just gonna go underneath there. Piece of hardware is gonna go in there just for now. I mean, it does move up and down this area here and we'll secure that in later. The key thing is to make sure if you're gonna do it, and I have multiple machines, have this bolt on the outside so that you can be able to get in there and tighten it. So this one, the bolt needs to be on this side and on this one, the bolt needs to be on the other side. All right, we're good. Now those couple pieces, now those couple pieces of hardware, I don't have to do anything crazy. I'm just gonna go ahead and get them all tightened down in there. No need to let you all see that. We'll come back when this is all secure and then we'll take a look at what we got going. All right, so here we are. We are getting things tightened up. We are greasing the arms. My son's over here putting the grease into the grease search. Typically it's like 20 pumps in the tops, maybe like five in the bottoms. We got these snugged up pretty good and tight. Nothing crazy. I know you typically supposed to snug all this stuff up when it's on the ground, but for right now, we're just gonna do what we're doing. Keep on going through with it and then double check all that stuff once we get this on the ground. But we're getting really close. Soon what we're gonna be doing is getting these knuckles put on. Then we're gonna be getting the steering stem put in. We got our tie rods over there on the floor and then we'll be able to shoot, get close to having some wheels on. All right, so we got everything tightened up in the motor that we said we were gonna get done. We got the arms greased. Now it's time to get the steering stem in. We went ahead and put a new bearing down there and new seals and everything, but we got this powder, powder coated a more of a satin black. Down on the bottom, there is a guide that's supposed to go down there, but I don't have it right now. So I'm gonna not tighten any of that up yet. But up top right here, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and get our guide and thing on there. Not the best looking one that you can buy, but it is tight. So it's not a, an issue. So that'll sit right there. 
All right, so we got our bracket that we're gonna go ahead and get installed on there. This is the OEM piece of hardware on this side. And I am gonna come back, as I said it later on, with some lock washers to make sure these do not move. But for right now, we're just gonna secure it down nice and snug. Where we can get our steering stem installed officially and get our tie rods and things on. So our steering stem is installed besides that spacer that I told about. A little bit of grease down there, moves good. We got our Pro Taper bars on there, looking real good and clean and straight. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our whole knuckle spindle down on there. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead and get our steering knuckle on. I am just waiting on the one bolt that goes here and the different hardware that goes into the rear, but Besides that, that's simple. We can go ahead and just get these things placed down on here where they should be. So we're gonna get down here and put the first bolt on. We'll get, the, get our other bolt up top. Then we have our tie rods, and these tie rods have new tie rod ends, bolts, and this is the powder coat that I did here. So we're gonna go ahead and get those installed. I always get confused sometimes, I forget which way goes, but I'm thinking they go from underneath. Yeah, that's underneath. Perfect. So it's cold now, temperature dropped the next day. For some reason, temperature's all over the place, but well, you kind of have that in spring. It isn't really like a new thing. But what we have here is the front end is completely installed. We have the pro taper bars on, steering stem down. Like I see, it's still waiting on that little spacer. It's in the mail, already ordered it. But as you see, we're steering. I do, Tighten my tie rods all the way in. Then I count back like four turns. Then I do the other side four turns until they're kind of close to even. Then once I get wheels on and tires on, what I'll do is then just narrow that down, tweak it a little bit more so that we're in a better position and we usually have a quarter inch of toe in so that we continue to run straight. Some people want it exact, some people want it different, but I like mine like that. So that's how I set all my machines up. But I think that looks good. So this is the zinc plating, and this is the powder that I do. I mean, they're really close. We have the rear end that's gonna be getting installed soon enough, but everything down here looks good. I do gotta remember to put my rollers in on here. The motor's all in and tight. I gotta put my stator on and get my stator side cover tightened down. I just haven't really done that yet because I am waiting on my chain guide. But there's just a couple things that we're doing, just giving you all a quick update because sometimes you just get lost moving along with this. And we like said, we're gonna be running the Sedona bazookas in the stock size on here. We were getting the wheels done. So that'll be the next thing on the list, but let's go. Fox. Wow. Was never your home. You just spent three years there. Exactly. Uh -uh. All right, everyone. So the wheels have come out of the oven. They are freaking amazing looking. I mean, these are probably the best ones that I've done so far. As far as the color goes, we have the, we have the gold right here. This is the candy gold or nope, it's not candy gold, golden ticket. And the illusion cherry right in there. Well, look. This is the golden ticket and the illusion red. With all the hardware in there. We got it wrapped in the 2011-9 Sedona bazookas. And we also went ahead and get the rear input on there.
All right, everyone. So you all remember from the last little bit, we already had the swing arm powder coated with the Illusion Red. A little dirty right now, but it looks great. See if I can get a little bit of that metallic on there. There's a little bit of that metallic for us. But we went ahead and got our hardware installed. We got our linkage vapor blasted. We have this piece of aluminum pipe there just because I haven't gotten my shock back. I do have the axle nut all in there, hubs, sprocket hubs, everything is in there. This is all powder coat, not Cerakote or not any kind of zinc plating. This is anodized gold. I didn't want to do too much there, so I wanted to break it up a little bit. All in all, we look really good sitting there as we do. I mean, we're close to getting this sitting on the ground. I want to show you all the linkage, so we're going to go over here to my other parts. It's a mess, but bear with me. So this is the linkage, the wishbone from the other one. What I did was zinc plated, dipped it into the yellow chromate really quickly, a little light coat, and we did the same thing for here for the spring. But this is a ball joint, and I wanted it to just be kind of close to that, but not crazy off from it. I mean, it is a bit brighter, and I am working with it to get it all close. But this is all the hardware that I've been kind of doing, just a few extra parts here and there. And we got stuff everywhere. We need these here in a second. Got all these extra little castle nuts and things. But everything is on there. So... We went ahead and got the new kit installed from Tusk. The Tusk linkage kit comes with all these extra parts. This is another one for the other one here because we got to do that one. But what we're going to do is just go ahead, get this thing down on the ground after I get the rear wheels on. And well, get the hubs and stuff on and we're going to see what this thing looks like. Go ahead and get this installed on there. We're not gonna put it on super tight or anything. It's just gonna go on there for the time being so I can get this machine sitting on the ground. Come back around. Just gonna, well, we anti seize all these lugs, but this is just gonna be on there for right now just to have something to seat on. Good to go there. We're gonna go ahead and get the rear on and be good. You don't gotta be in the hole like that. You ready? Mm -hmm. but you. All right, so we have moved along as you see, wheels and everything on. We got this machine into a roller. All right, everyone. So we have the 99 sitting here on the ground looking wonderful. We did get the wheels and tires installed and there was no issues with that. However, it's been a couple days. I got a couple things back in the shop. I got um, a gentleman's banging sheet that I'm going to be redoing probably off screen just so I don't have all the recording and things in, in the time lapse. We can get it done quicker. I have an O3 back here I'm going to do. I did get my boys Raptor 250 back. Once we got it reinstalled and it got hot like that, we are going to send the head off to give it milk. But anyways, just let you know, though, the lack of space. We're going to turn around, take a look at what else we got installed on this machine. And then we're going to kind of close this one up and kind of do it into two video parts. I am waiting on the plastics and the harness. And I don't want to wait out a few more weeks before I get this content uploaded. So we're going to go ahead and get that uploaded. That part of the video, we're going to be getting the last two things installed. But we're going to go ahead and get rolling right now. All right. So we have the motor completely installed in and the carbs all stored up, cleaned up and everything. We got the master cylinders tightened down, the foot pegs on there. We do have the black brake line just semi-installed. Just got to come back here to the master cylinder once that's done. I have a sprocket I'm going to be getting put on at some point in the next video. We can see the wheels and everything are all tightened up. We have the linkage and everything down there with just our piece of solid bar there. We're waiting on that. 
But I didn't go ahead and get the exhaust recoated black. Looks great. I got my chain guard, got my rear brake, got a whole bunch of other little parts in here that we got to get done. Well, those are all done. I went ahead and put my throttle on, been powder coated and redone. My bumper pad, so it keeps it with the, even though it's custom and it's a 99, I wanted to keep that bar pad look going across the front. So we're going to go ahead and put the bar pad on there. I do have the clutch lever and the cable is all ran down through there. So that's all good. But yeah, I felt like there was more that we've gotten done, but maybe it was just stuff off camera. Like, you know, prepping these pipes took a little bit because I Cerakoted the lower half up to about right here and then I powder coated the rest of it. So that looks real good. I need to go ahead and get the can done, which is sitting over there and get it repacked. So there's just a couple more things I have to do to get this to where it's going to be startable besides waiting on the uh, wiring harness. But like I said, everything else, we're good. Ordered my plastics about two or three days ago, so those should be coming in. I'm going to be running a stock seat, so it's going to be really custom, but still have the colors to let you know what year it's going to be. All right, everyone, and if you're interested in this kind of content, hit that like button and subscribe, turn on the notification bell, so that the next time I upload the video, which is going to be part two of this series, you'll be able to follow along with this. So what we're going to be doing is closing this one out. If you're interested in some of the past things we've done, go ahead and check out the 93 421 that we did over here and the full build, and go ahead and check out the 05 that we did over there that's also a 421. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid. I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh.